Good day everyone, I'm Tatiana Thompson and this is episode 48 of Brombird News. Only four episodes left until the end of season one. It was great to get all the feedback from you, but we would like to hear more. I've shown you what kind of bird bath to use to attract more birds to your backyard, but I've never really mentioned to you how often to clean your bird baths or how often to replace water in them. Well, basically, if it's been really dry and you haven't had rain for many days like we have here, and if you want to make sure that mosquitoes don't spread like crazy, mosquito eggs need at least two days to incubate, then you should replace water in your bird baths every day. I actually do it on my lunch break. And I'm gonna show you how I clean my bird bath. If you look at this one, it was uh, refilled and cleaned yesterday, not even 24 hours ago. And there's barely any water left. There is all kinds of things floating in there, a little bit of bird feces, some food, dirt, and I don't know what else. Well, you probably know that bird feces are quite toxic to us humans, so you don't want to be touching anything that contains bird feces with your bare hands. That's why I have my disposable gloves here. I put them on before I clean my bird bath. Like that. And first, the stones come out. Ta-da! Well, Bird feces are actually pretty good fertilizers for plants. That's why I have my flower pot and other plants around here. So I just dump this water into the plants. Ta -da! Then I pour a little bit of clean water and I give my bird bath a good rinse. You can use a sponge or a brush, but I prefer to do it with my hands because that way I can feel all the slime and I can lift it with my hands. And again, this goes into my plants. Like that, now it's all clean. Then I rinse the stones to make sure that there is no slime. You can do it over the grass as well. I'm just gonna actually put them back. There we go. Nice and clean. So there we go. And now we're ready to refill. And tomorrow it will be all dirty and full of gunk again. So that this is all done. And now we watch. Hi David, Lisa Cavanari from Michigan has a question for you. This year for the first time she hosted Eastern Bluebirds on her property. She witnessed two successful clutches, but the third one, the mother was sitting on her eggs way too long and Lisa could see some discoloration on them. After a while she removed the eggs and now she's concerned that she's scared off the mother and she won't be back next year. What do you think? Hi Lisa. You should be very pleased that as a first-time bluebird landlady, your pair of birds produce not just one decent-sized brood of young, but two. That's excellent productivity for one pair, at least to my mind. As for that third brood not hatching from their eggs in the latter part of July, I'm not all that surprised. It's a well-known fact among ornithologists that eggs lay later in the season have a decreased hatchability success. Whether it's tied to warmer temperatures, decreased nutrition of the female producing the eggs, reduced sperm production in the male, or some other unknown factor is still a bit of a mystery. If the eggs look discolored to you, it's a strong sign they're rotten inside. Sometimes you can even smell the rottenness by holding an egg up to your nose. If it happens again next year, I wouldn't hesitate to remove them. Keeping an adult bird tied to incubating eggs which have no chance of hatching puts them at risk and distracts her from tending to the fledged young she's already produced. Also, rotten eggs can explode, creating a mess inside the box and attracting unwanted insects. And I can guarantee you that she'll not remember the next season that you removed her eggs from that nest box the year before. Their memories are not that great. 
On episode 45, I talked about the return of the red kite and the amazing efforts by Gickring Farm to set up a permanent feeding station for these birds. Well, we have more good news. For the first time in 200 years, red kites have been spotted in North County, Dublin. Two nests with chicks have been found and adults have been seen in the area. Hmm, it'll be interesting to see what happens in 10 years. Another follow-up, Sasha Dench has started her epic airborne journey flying with Buick Swans to find out why their numbers are declining. She'll be flying for 70 days, crossing 11 countries, and all that's in just a small paraglider. For more details, check out their website. You've probably heard that hurricanes have a tendency to displace animals all over the world. This might explain how a red-footed booby ended up in Sussex, England. That's about 10,000 kilometers or 6,300 miles from its home, the Galapagos. The bird was really exhausted and now it's in the shelter being taken care of. Another story that I wanted to share with you this week comes from Alan Fryer. This is something that happened to his son Tim, who lives in Australia. Tim was biking from work when all of a sudden he got knocked off his bicycle. Of course, his instinct was to look for a license plate, but he didn't see any cars. As he was getting up, he noticed a huge magpie was circling right above his head. That's when he remembered his Australian wildlife training. All animals in Australia want to kill you in one way or another. Well, Tim ran for his life and now he makes sure he doesn't leave the house without a helmet and proper armor. So if you're planning a trip to Australia, remember, don't feed the animals. On episode 44, I talked about the Oregon Audubon Society taking the U.S. government to court over controlled killings of double-crested cormorants along the Columbia River. The U.S. government decided that it was the birds that were decimating the salmon population, whereas the Audubon Society thinks it's the hydro installations that are killing all the fish. Well, a federal judge decided in favor of the government, and the killing of cormorants will continue. If you're thinking of going on a birding trip and you're not sure which one to take or maybe you're considering buying a new set of binoculars or a birding camera or maybe you're looking for new bird books and bird guides or maybe you just want to meet all the incredible bird experts then you should definitely attend the American Birding Expo that will be happening this weekend in Columbus, Ohio. We attended last year and I absolutely loved it. Really interesting presentations, knowledgeable people and really positive cool vibe there so the american burning expo this weekend in columbus ohio i was seriously excited to see the results of this week's winner's circle because we received pictures that were taken in the galapagos we received a picture from england there were pictures with such amazing composition and all kinds of actions well we have a tie this week again we will announce both winners, but we're going to send the legacy to the one who's never won before. So let's check out the top five, or actually top six. And so the two winners this week are Steve Swearingen with his picture of the cattle egrets. Isn't that amazing? And Reverend Derek Hollis, who lives actually in England. Derek, congratulations. And we're sending you this feeder, the legacy. Enjoy it. And I will see you all next Tuesday.